everybody. I am so excited to introduce you to my friend Holly today. Holly is a dynamic woman and I'm pretty sure we met on Instagram, right? Maybe? Leading and loving it. Leading and loving it. Yes. Leading <laughs> but it came and loving it. Instagram after. Yes. 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 Leading and loving it and Instagram. Right. And- and then we like FaceTimed and, uh, yes. and I got to hear your story. And so I feel like we're in real life friends, even mm-hmm. though we had the in real life moment mm-hmm. as many times. But um, I'm excited for all of you to meet Holly today, for you to hear her story, um, who she is, who she's becoming. So to kick it off, like mm-hmm. Holly, who is Holly? Okay, so my favorite smell on the planet is skunk. I know I know it's not so random but I always tell that because people always remember me after that they're like she's a girl who likes to smell skunk but I love to smell skunk when I smell it riding down the road I will roll my window down stick my head out the window I love it and I think it's because when I was a little kid I used to travel a lot with dancing and so my mom would always pull into McDonald's to get coffee and a cinnamon roll and I think I transferred skunk smell with coffee and so now they both I know it's really weird. It's, that it's, is really But funny I love though. skunk. <laughs> I love skunk. My favorite candy is banana Laffy Taffy. Ooh, that um, is a good one. Mm-hmm. And once upon a time, I clogged on Hee Haw and got to meet Johnny Cash. We got our makeup done together. Yes. No way. Yes. Very cool. cool. That mm-hmm. is cool. Yep. And I married my high school sweetheart. I have two teenage daughters, um, Rebecca and Rachel. And um, I love Reese Cups. Me too. And coffee is like my life. I love it. Oh, yes. We both have very full cups of coffee. Yes, 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 (laughs) absolutely. That's a lot of, that's like some quirky things about me. I love it. Um, I am a pastor's wife in North Carolina, and I work with a ministry um, with girls rescued from sex trafficking. And I love that. I do that every single day. I also speak with um, Clayton King Ministries and, yeah, and I lead a ministry unbound within our church. It's like our girls' ministry, so... My plate is full, but it's all the things that I love the most, so it's great. That's incredible. I'm yeah. always so inspired and encouraged. Anytime I see you post things online, I'm just like, man, mm-hmm. Holly's doing this and this and this. Mm-hmm. Like God is just using you in huge ways. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think one of the things that I love about you the most is exactly what you just said. He, Your plate is full, and He has you in all these places where your influence is huge, but it's mm-hmm. all birthed from who you are and mm-hmm. your story and what's on the inside of Holly. Mm-hmm. Um, so I would love just for Becoming Me at TV to hear your story. What What is your story? Um, when I was eight years old, my dad decided that him and my mom's marriage was not going to work out. And I remember that day. I remember being in the living room, sitting on, on this big, ugly pillow with this orange carpet. The sun was like beaming through the window and I could see the little dust particles. And I remember them like fussing and like coming to the conclusion that their marriage was over. I didn't understand what was happening inside of me at that moment. But I remember when he pulled out of our driveway, it was like, that was my first sign of like loss and like mourning something that I didn't even know was gone. And so when he drove out of the driveway, something happened in me and rejection became my best friend and um, isolation. And he put inside of me so many more things that was going to, would lead me to this place I am today. But it started with, just trying to please every single girl there was through mm-hmm. friendships. Um, I would dress however they wanted me to dress. I would, I literally would act however they wanted me to act. And as I, that progressed and I never didn't do drug, I didn't do drug, but boys became my drug of choice. And I tried so hard to, to maintain relationships to the point um, of just severe heartbreak a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, I would have a boyfriend at church clogging in school and then that would get me in trouble. Um, but at the same time, I didn't understand that every single time I gave a piece of my heart to one of them or a friendship that I was trying so hard to maintain, that it was also digging this deeper hole of me not having any idea who I was. Mm. So then food became something that was such a struggle for me. And I was not overweight at all through like middle school, high school. I was a dancer. I was a cheerleader. Mm. But through the process of, of that, I grew up in church, so I would hear God's truth, but it never like stuck. Um, and so when I got to college, I had met my high school sweetheart, which is my husband, Richard. I met him my senior year in high school, and it was like, whoa, like everything stopped. And I was a 17-year-old girl without a dad active in her life. I had given so much of myself away um, through friendships and relationships. I had no 
idea who I was that I even liked to smell like at that point. Like I didn't, I was so in this like limbo of like, who the heck are you? And I remember going to my, to Marshall College my freshman year and my husband and I um, just acted like we were pretty much married my whole senior year. Mm. And when I got to college, um, I remember this girl asked me to come to a Bible study and I said, she's in a sorority and that's all I heard. And to come to this place and it's BYOB, bring your own Bible. So I was like, this is really weird, but I'm going to go because I have no idea who I am. So let me go find more friends. So I go to this sorority um, Bible study and they start talking about Jesus mm. in a way that I'd never experienced before. And I, I, even though I grew up in an incredible church at that moment, it was like, God was like pouring out on me and I could, my neck started sweating. And I remember going back to my room, sobbing, asking God to forgive me. And all I could just say was, I'm sorry. So I called my fiance at that time, Richard, and I said, I need to talk. And he came over we cried together. We committed to be pure in the rest of our engagement of our relationship. And so over those next three years, we remained completely pure in our relationship. But even though Jesus had come in and had wrecked my life, there were still these remnants and all these pieces of brokenness in me. Mm-hmm. And so I didn't immediately say, oh, I know who I am. I don't like pizza. I do like Reese cups. I like the color green. Like I still had so many little pieces that were so messed up and fragile and people still had those pieces for me still Mm -hmm. and so even like with my mom like she could dictate a lot of who I was in whatever season Mm -hmm. I remember one of the hardest breaking points for me is I uh, had a clogging scholarship to Mars Hill and I remember it was the summer before my junior year and I had was just done it was a lot of different like groups of like partying and I could not handle it anymore and so I decided to forego my scholarship to quit the clogging team so I could for myself to walk with the Lord. And that was hard for my mom because that burden, financial burden became my financial burden. Mm -hmm. It was a really huge choice for me. But I looking back, that's almost like a pivotal pivotal moment for me to say, you know, I'm going to make a decision and I'm going to be okay with it. And then I'm going to kind of move forward with it. And even, even now thinking about that, tracing it back to that one decision of, you know, not having friendships lost from that clogging team. We were like a family Mm -hmm. to walking away from um, my my mom's approval. You know, that was a big deal for me. It was a really huge deal. And even though she began to support that decision and she saw that I was just trying to love Jesus the best I could in that season, um, you know, that really came, you know, full circle. There was still that lingering thing with my dad who traced everything that I had ever done. I feel like for so long, I blamed it on him. Um, my sins of, you know, constant, you know, disobedience, I blamed it back and traced it back to what he had put on me mm-hmm. as an eight year old girl. And so I remember it was a summer, um, before my, um, senior year, my husband and I decided we could not wait to kiss anymore. So we decided we were going to go get married a year early <laughs> so we moved our marriage up and I had to have the decision of, do I let my dad walk me down the aisle or my stepdad who'd been there for me since the ninth grade? Mm-hmm. And um, even though I didn't like him for most of those years, something had shifted and we became really close. And so for my wedding day, I walked down the aisle by myself because I couldn't make a decision. Wow. And looking back to those tapes now, like I, I said tapes, VHS, that tells you oh, all <laughs> I mean, like those, those little CDs, you know? Yeah. Um, <laughs> But um, looking back now, that would, I feel like that would probably break my heart to watch that again. And mm. cause I didn't, I didn't want to tell my dad no, but I didn't want to tell my stepdad no. So the loneliness of having to walk down the aisle that I had said I was going to be pure for my husband was heart wrenching for me. And I was only 20 years old. I was, you know, right before my senior year in high school, college. And so then I get married to my man who is fine. And then I, six months after we get married, I have a plan that I'm going to go to seminary to become a Christian counselor. But the Lord says, no, you're pregnant. And so I'm like, are you kidding me? I haven't even graduated college yet. My mom's going to ground me. <laughs> um, if you know, I was married, I had all these like crazy thoughts of approval, which went back to like, what do they even think? Are they going to try to like add it up and see if I got pregnant before, you know, all these crazy thoughts of trying to please other people. And so when um, I was a week from graduating college, I was seven months pregnant and my dad called me 
and he was going to come up to spend the weekend for college to, for graduation. And we talked in the phone on the phone till one in the morning. I told him that I loved him, that I had forgiven him. Um, just incredible evening of just like having just a, a closure for me. Yeah. Literally all the things I felt like the Lord was bringing that moment for me. And the next day he was killed at work. And yes, he Ooh. was killed and it crushed me. And, but I remember walking into the hospital and he was sitting um, on this like gurney and I don't know why they left. I don't know why that my family thought it would be a good idea for me to see him that way. But they did. I think they thought they would give me closure. And so that image, Emily, mm. has burned in my mind for about, he's been dead for almost 19 years, for wow. almost 19 years. Wow. Okay. So about two or three months ago, when my husband and I decided we were going to really get this thing started with our remodeling our home. Mm -hmm. We have an elderly uncle living with us. And so I was outside and I was looking um, through some old albums and different things. Mm -hmm. I picked up this one album. And when I picked it up and turned the pages, there was a picture of my dad from when he was really young. Wow. And it was like, God said to me so clearly, I make all things new. <laughs> so for 19 years, I had this horrific image of my Dad, mm. dead dad was this like his looked horrible on this gurney mm. now God, now what's so crazy is I can't even go back to that image in my head even wow. trying to talk to you me trying to go back to walk through those doors to the hospital it's gone wow and, and so I literally this lifetime I'm 41 years old has been this season after season of trying to become whoever whoever anybody else wanted me to be and the last three to five years has been this journey of like, you know what? I don't like pizza unless it's mellow mushroom. Or you know what? I'm going to be who I am regardless. Mm -hmm. I'm overweight, but I just say I'm thick in this whatever. I don't care. And it doesn't stop me from trying to like to be healthy. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that at all. But like mm -hmm. I'm okay with who I am for the first time in my life. And so I really believe that. Even when my dad left me when I was eight years old, God brought something back through my father <laughs> as a picture of who he is in my life, that, that he makes all things new, that he doesn't see anything that I've ever done. Mm -hmm. or what, and so it, it literally has changed my perspective on who I am and who I'm becoming. So That's incredible. Oh, my goodness. I have like goosebumps just hearing Aww. that part of your story. That's huge. I love what you had said uh, mm -hmm. about you are finally becoming who you are and being comfortable yes. with that. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we've kind of, we've joked around and talked about we have coffee, which we mm -hmm. totally do. And if you are sitting across from another woman, you're having a cup of coffee, you're hanging out um, and she's on her own becoming journey. Mm -hmm. What would you say to encourage her? There's a scripture in Psalm 4610 and it says this to be still and know that I'm God. Mm -hmm. There's a version in the NASB version. It says, cease striving and know that I'm God. Mm -hmm. And I feel like there's so many teenage girls, college girls and women. We are striving. We're striving and we're trying so hard to meet the deadlines. We're trying to become who we need for others. To, we, we project what we want other people to to see about us in our lives. Mm -hmm. And I've, if I could just sit in front of someone, I would say, stop striving and just be, mm -hmm. just be who God has called you to be. If that means if you are in a position, if you're working in a McDonald's, just stop striving and be who you are and be everything that God has put into you. He's already given you everything that you need to be who you're becoming. You know, we just, sometimes we don't, we don't let that just sit and like, stirring us we want to say no but I like what she's got so I'm going to strive to be who she is and so that's something that for myself for speaking I compared myself to everyone and I remember this lady told me about eight years ago she got me by the face and she said stop trying to be who you are not and I'm like you know what I'm funny and I stutter sometimes and I don't know how I don't know all the books of the Bible by heart and except unless I sing it like I don't know that's who I am and I have to be okay with that because I know that there was two summers ago I was speaking and I remember um I just stopped talking about like body image and like freedom in Christ and I remember after the service was over my line had formed and it was all these girls who by the world standards would be overweight. And these girls were standing in my line to tell me what you said has impacted my life. And I thought, you know what? I might be thick to the day I walked into heaven, but those girls need me to be thick. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. so I feel like, you know, I feel like when, if I'm striving to be who God's called me to be, 
that I'm going to walk in love and compassion and I'm going to pursue who he has, who, who he's put into me. Yeah. And, oh, yeah. And I think that with, because my message, it's everybody who knows me, it's freedom, 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 freedom. That's what I talk about. But yeah, I think there's a disconnect mm. for women. If we're stopped striving and we're trying to walk in freedom from our thoughts or emotions, the oppression from that, there's one thing to know God's word, Galatians 5, 1, it is for freedom that Christ died. Mm. Believing it and walking in it, that's where freedom comes from. It's, it's mm. walking in it. I'm going to walk in the freedom of who I am. And yep. so that would be for me, it's really just trying to put that into somebody to, to <laughs> in Jesus freely being who you are called to be and not who everybody else said to be. I love that. That is huge. Cheers. <laughs> exactly. Cheers. Yes. <laughs> I love that so much. That reminds me of, um, I've seen some people like Instagram and Facebook, the picture, like I will not compare myself to strangers on the internet. Right. Right. Is, I mean, we compare ourselves to people on social media, people we yes. know in real life, like mm-hmm. you can't get away from it. And I find myself even doing that score on th- Instagram. I'm like, oh my yes, God, like, you know, this or that. And I think about with David, like with Saul, yeah. Saul put his armor on him and said, he was trying to protect him. He was trying to put what he thought was going to be the best fit for him. And it said David could not walk in it. Hmm. So he had already what he needed to yep. keep the giant. And so, and I thought, what if he would have ran to the battle line with that armor on? He probably would have clumbered over and fell down. You yep. know? And so I feel like it's so important that we already act in what God's already put into us. And then I'm an encourager. So that's my, that's my gifting. So if I use my gifting to encourage versus flattering somebody, hmm. There's, I get to choose which what I'm going to wear. Yep. So um, I think that's important. It's like literally just to walk in that. That's huge. I love that. Mm-hmm. Love it. Thank you so much for sharing mm-hmm. and sharing your story, who you are, and then just fabulous, fabulous encouragement. Um, for all of you watching, make sure you connect with Holly online, follow her, yes. follow her journey, um, get to know her more. She's always speaking and at different events too. So is there a website that people can even find out where you are? If yes. Come to an it's um, it's www.claytonkingministries.com. Boom. And we'll have that link in the uh, this post as well. Um, but Holly, thank you. Thank you. So, so, so honored to call you a friend. So, thank you. Thank it's you. good seeing you.